all right our apologies cock and bull on a monday morning uh, the fault is completely uh, somebody else's because the sound on the computer in work for some reason uh, my seven people in the office weren't able to come to a conclusion so we're now on the phone and hence we had a two minute delay we tried our best but at 1002 we decided last man standing have to get on with the show so we ended uh, the crap attempt to try and get you better technology so i hope i can hear the other participants the wonderful voices of uh, amit and uh, there will be three days in a row of celebrity and amit which is too much it's like we married to them now <laughs> but we missed i hope you can hear me guys we miss our monday morning meetings where we discuss english as a language of development which will increase yeah. not just your intellect but your cocktail conversations once this uh, pandemic comes to a standstill by the year 2028 so what i've decided today is i'm going to give you two uh, an easy one like the theory of relativity i'll give you an easy one first and then i'll give you the tougher one the step by step process all right so we're going to start yeah, with this right. word it, it's a noun it's called uh, the word is called zenana z e n a n a zenana. pronounced zenana in english uh, it's from persian so persian well, word it means uh, a tent like it a, a tent. It, like like it's a it's a place to cool yourself off in the middle of the desert well i would say no 11.3% correct and oh, about 88 odd percent wrong but you're somewhere I think, in the direction of correctness let's turn I to think, the young man yeah, i think it means something like eh like it's yeah it's zanana it's like something that is like on wasted or not important something that's zanana okay. isn't you're, it's an oasis 100% wrong it's, it's like you're the settlement and you leave the room this oh, is good okay. actually <laughs> properly that's how wrong you are Is isn't it the tent at an oasis? The rest stop at an oasis. Isn't that what it's supposed to be? No, Baba. It's not a tent in an oasis. But your your thinking is, I don't know how to say it. You're somewhat in the right direction. Uh, Silvery is completely not in the right direction. So if it helps, okay. okay, I'll tell you what. It's it's a Persian word, which is also an Urdu word. As you know, Urdu is not a Persian influence, and it's pronounced a little differently by us when we would use it, if we would use it, or if we were chase Urdu speakers, which neither none of us are. So Zenana. it's a noun and it is it is a geographical confinement of sorts that that part oh, is correct okay like like gharana like home like uh, gharana now see you're looking at your you know my cousin twice removed my cousin's cousin <laughs> my you know, I, look i can't feed it to you guys i mean you're all educated you you're, you're not telling me it's the i'm seeing a lot of comments saying women related women related so is it like yes, the yes those comments are correct amit doshi those okay. cheaters those dirty ugly cheaters who are helping you in the comment section those <laughs> anabolic users those people should be banned from all olympic sports are absolutely correct now you've got the two components the geographical confinement and what they have said about women now you put it together yeah so it's the women's quarters the women section of the house i guess yes it is a secluded part area for the by now you must have either googled it i think with that spare hand or someone in the comment no, section is i cannot no uh, Someone is speaking to you correctly. No, so I mean, like uh, there, there are uh, uh, somebody says the for women, uh, it's used for women. It's a Buddhist banana. Uh, Janana is women related. Uh, Zanana, when you're trying to say banana but you're drunk. Uh, Persian name for harem. I guess that's probably the closest. Okay, I, I like the second <laughs> meaning better than the real meaning. So for henceforward, <laughs> we're going to call it. If it's a banana, when you're trying to say banana when you're drunk, you say zanana. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the new meaning. I'm changing it in the Oxford Dictionary. Please, everybody, to follow suit. So that's Zenana, Urdu or Persian, secluded part for ladies. It's like a female shelter in the house where only women can go for whatever reason. Okay. Okay. Now that now we come to the tough word. This was the easy one. Remember, Silvery, please buck up. Yeah. You're getting eighty eighty every time here. <laughs> the word is it's a noun and it's sigmoidoscopy. S i g m o i d sigmoid. O scopy O S C O P Y sigmoidoscopy think it's a noun. Uh, it's a medical procedure. Deep, it's yeah, it's a deep examination of somebody's psyche. It's a deep what examination of somebody's psyche. The psyche. Once again, Amit Doshi. Psychology. Once again, you yes. enter the area of correctness and then deviate uh, incorrectly. <laughs> so once again, you're in the right direction. And so But, Sigmund, I'm guessing Sigmund, 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 Sigmund hmm. Freud, something like that, no, right? No, 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 don't, don't go for that. Don't go for that. It's Sigmundoscopy. You were right. Your first half is right about examination of something, 
and then oh, it's okay. sort of is it uh, examination of the brain for you like... silvery it is examination of the brain but for the general <laughs> uh, you know population it's examination of the anus so you know oh, it depends okay, oh, okay. <laughs> generally <laughs> speaking okay. it's basically I, i'll just read out examination of the sigmoid colon by means of a flexible tube inserted through the anus which then reads the colon situation and tells you how bad your colon is uh so that's what the actual meaning is but <laughs> but i like a uh, fera mind to say sigmund freud looks up your behind so once again we will accept that the comments have given us better answers we are removing sigmoidoscopy's old meaning of uh, uh, a sigmoid colon being examined through a uh, the anus with a tube and it is now going to be sigmund freud examining your behind <laughs> which is you know on so many levels beyond my understanding and capacity because he's dead for so many years and as far as i know his fixations were do with mother and sex and things like that and not so much with the behind okay enough of that the scores uh, amit doshi for coming close in both cases gets 4 on 10 which is 40% and he passes silvery for absolute bakwas gets 5 on 10 gets 5 on 10 thank you <laughs> yes, but what is more important on our show? Very close. Facts. We don't want people with facts. They should be banned. And here it ended the segment. Zinana and Sigmoidoscopy. I hope one day we can put together all the words because I have forgotten all of them that we discovered on a Monday. Oh, we should, yeah. yeah. yeah we yeah, should yeah, do that. We, we yeah, should yeah, make a note of months. those. Yes. Yep. Correct. Uh, there you go. Okay. Right. So now I have to tell you about the technology issue. I want to ask you what went wrong with my computer and why can't I use it? I, I mean, still don't know. Perfectly well till now, except for the sound. I I, I still don't know. Are you uh, in office tomorrow? Or are you at home tomorrow? I'm in office tomorrow, as okay, well. So then I'll have to figure out a time to come by and figure it out. I have no idea when I'll do that. But you come I'm yourself. Only... You send the Rishi, the tech I... guy. Uh, so Rishi lives like very very far away, if I'm not mistaken. There is no so... excuse. <laughs> and also, uh, Rishi is one of the most critical people in our company because he's the one who runs uh, Streamcast, a uh, Streamyard. Right, so he has to run Streamyard for like a bunch of other people. So I'm not asking him to go anywhere. He needs to sit very quietly in his computer in his little den and just like connect people to Streamyard all day long. That's what he does. You're so. describing him to be a complete pervert who sits in a dark room all day and plays with his computer and himself. I don't want this guy in my office ever. May may be very clear. Can we get somebody else, please? Yeah. Uh, now let me try and see if I can get the computer guy to come. If I can get him to come, great. If not, I'll figure something out. Otherwise, take the laptop to the office tomorrow with you. You uh, have the laptop. Oh, uh, that's exactly right. That's all I have to do. Yeah. Why am I yeah. worried? It's only yes. one day then. Fair enough. That's true. I'm gonna okay. figure it out. Uh, we are open for business on this Monday morning. Um, yes. There's lots of things happening in the world, mostly to to do with Afghanistan, but I'm sure there are a couple of critical stories in India as well. I've lost interest in India for the last couple of weeks. Of the Taliban take over. There's some big things happening right though. Indian, sorry. There's some big things happening in India also though. Uh like Please the, go ahead and tell us. Like Get out of Nagar and tell me everything. <laughs> in Muzaffarnagar there are thousands of farmers like close to 1 lakh farmers are supposed to be meeting for the Kisan Mahapanchayat. Uh this is to this is just a couple of months ahead of the UP elections and uh, this is like the biggest gathering again of uh, farmers in recent times. Like more than a lack, literally in that one event, the Maha and the Maha Panchayat. This is again they are against the UP government and the BJP government, so they're like, we will make sure they do not come to power the next time. And uh, so yeah, this could be like a big thing for Yogi. So Yogi has a meeting. They're supposed to meet Yogi in uh, in Lucknow in a couple of days. So they're going to be there also. A lot of these people will go from here to there. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty. So is this assembly of farmers? In India right now. uh protesting against laws democratic or undemocratic democratic according to the up government uh it's democratic because they took permissions and all they got permissions for that one it's like a huge college uh, campus ground or something and uh, but how that can they, they, but how does the up government think that is democratic if it is saying that it's not going to vote for bjp that doesn't work now for them yeah <laughs> that's true <laughs> You're right. That's a uh, catch twenty two. How how does it happen? <laughs> but nobody knows. Also, the fact that you take permissions for civil disobedience, this just kills it for me. It's like everybody's hand in glove. <laughs> What's the point of the protest then? I mean, should you be like just protesting instead of saying, "Bro, we are three or five people in this place. AC will be there. More people will not be there. And break will take place after one hour. I think that yeah. you can't have. It just sounds wrong. No, but Sajjad, you can't uh, say. Uh, I, I think. Uh, 
the the thing is just this right uh, this is a pro this is one protest we agree with there are many protests that happen every day of the week in all parts of the country if everybody kept protesting everywhere without needing any kind of permission or anything like that and i don't say that permission should be difficult to get but people need to plan right i mean like uh, it shouldn't be that it's a hey, how does it work amit abroad in western democracies mm-hmm. do you if you have to protest do you have to call up the police and the fire department and the yeah. mayor and all that or do you just yeah, protest yeah. No, you have to. You have to. You you have to get a permit. You have to get a permit, right? Because otherwise, how are traffic? How is traffic going to be managed? I, I mean, like you know, these protests yeah. all happen like in the middle of town. They happen like all over this. How 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 are cops or anybody supposed to know that they're supposed to manage traffic? Also, if there's no permit for the protest. But yeah. on Saturday evening, I was held up in Marine Drive for twelve minutes while some VIPs were made to uh, go on the other side of the road. They held up on traffic for twelve minutes. They didn't take permission for that. They should holding up the traffic while they the should. jokers with the red lights went by. They should. I even booed the police on my way out, and my daughter said, "Don't do that." And I said, "Hi, hi, Mumbai police, hi, hi." I couldn't resist it. I couldn't stand it. It's I, the same yeah, thing. It is well. It isn't. It is and it isn't right. I mean, like in this sense, I mean, like we have people being entitled assholes. Well, actually, it is the same sense because in the other sense, also we have people being entitled assholes on the protester side, right? And not not because. And again, I'm sympathetic to protests generally, but you can't disrupt the entire world when you're protesting for a certain issue. And man, this is why know, I like I, the Scandinavian protests. There's never more than six people. So it's really not difficult to get permission. In fact, mostly they don't make the quota. They're like four people, and they ask a tourist to join in, just stand here and hold this flag, that kind of thing. Those countries so are better. So you can call protest. this a protest. <laughs> yeah, look at your one lakh. Your one lakh is like it's unheard of in Eastern or Western Europe. It just won't happen. They won't even ever get those numbers. They, I mean, a huge protest would be about sixty people, sixty people fighting against a uh, uh, bill against homosexuality or something. Sixty people would be a protest. I remember in London in two thousand and fifteen. There was a protest at uh, St James Park or whatever, just outside the park, and they warned us about it. It wasn't more than a hundred people. It was literally, it was just like a group of Mumbai tourists walking around. I mean, in terms of number, it was but nothing, that, and there was a warning. But isn't that how you maintain like some sense of dis- uh, some sense of discipline, some sense of uh, people being able to get around their uh, get up get about their day, even when a protest is going on, right? Because you know about know. it, right? Were you guys around uh, uh, two years back when the Maratha protests happened in the morning yeah. in South Bombay? They came to Azad Maidan. I mean, there were yeah. 10 yeah. million people. It was that yeah. was a protest. Mm-hmm. You were worried if you were caught in the middle of a sea of people and the trucks that brought them in and the buses that brought them in. I mean, that was scary. I think I, we I should think expose it, this to Western democracies for them to I, suffer. I think it was like a million people for real, right? Now, 10 million is a little exaggerated, but I think it was like a real, it was a million people I mean, for I mean, sure. who's counting? It's like sheep, right? You stand on uh, your balcony yeah. and you count one million and one, one million and two, one million and three. I mean, no no, but it, it, that was huge. There were, I think, there were like legitimately a million people on that protest. Huge! It was huge. It was yeah. never ending. Yeah, I, I think these are the. This is why the British left in the first place. These kind of protests, they just could handle. I mean, so many people turning up. It's very painful. I think we should export our protesting styles like a cultural export to other countries. So when in Sweden they have a some kind of they want to fight against, you know. Environmental uh, oppression, which probably is the big issue there. I can't think of too many others. Uh, not that it's a bad issue; it's a big issue. Uh, we send one million of our people there. We can mix it up. Uh, one uh, fifty thousand farmers, sixty thousand Marathas, twenty thousand Parsis, eight hundred uh, ch- children who didn't get applicant application in the proper place. Uh, caste issues, communal issues. All the people who are upset about everything, put them all together in a big box and export them and say this is from us. And then, and then they can see a protest that will bring a country to its knees. When you see one lakh Indians in the in your town square, you know, jumping over each other, screaming and shouting, and you know, not knowing what the protest is about, of course, because <laughs> environmental affairs is a different thing. Yeah, I, I can see we brought. Yeah, sorry. No, but I think uh, I, I think there have been large protests in Western part because I'm just remembering right now, right? Like uh, the Martin Luther the Luther King thing in the '60s. That was a million man march, right? Yeah, the I mean, Black like Lives Matter thing. Yeah, no, no, no. The, in the '60s, not the Black Lives Matter, but like in the no, '60s. No, but we had a million men march again. They repeated it, didn't they? Uh, yeah, but I don't the think Black that Lives. was actually a million. I, the the Martin Luther thing thing was called a million man march after it happened because there were actually a million people there. 
right. right? Whereas these are all like, you know, like there was uh, symbolic Donald. Yeah. When Donald Trump got elected, women marched on uh, Washington. It was called the Million Woman March. It was actually, I think the numbers finally came out like 450,000 or something, which is still huge, but it wasn't a million, right? In that sense. Fair no, enough. I'll accept it, rounding upwards. Yes, Silver. There are protests. There are protests taking place in America right now. They are anti-masker protests, and they are like a big thing right now, especially in states like Wisconsin and other red states. Uh, if I'm not wrong, Wisconsin is a red state, right, Amit? Uh, it's a it's a purple state. I don't know, but they give you a lot of cheese okay. there. Yeah, it, it's, it's uh, so it depends. Sure. Like it, it's or it's got the probably one of the top five most liberal cities in the country. But it's also okay. surrounded by a lot of uh, rural areas. Okay, so, so in Wisconsin, uh, in Wisconsin, there are anti-masker protests taking place where uh, parents are showing up at schools in like huge numbers uh, and be like, being like, "How can you force my child to wear masks? Don't force my child to wear masks." Taking away our, our like rights and all that. You know, you guys are not seeing this for what it is. This is a very practical issue. Americans don't recognize their own kids very often because of the distance between them. In any case. So they need them to be without masks. You take the wrong kid yeah. home. You can't just take right. your hi Joe. Let's go home, and it's John actually. You know, or two hours later. This, is, was this is a normal situation uh, out there. So I, so I, was, I always think practicality should triumph over anything else. So it's a practical issue, and you should allow them. I was watching to that point, right? I was watching one of these news reports talking about these parents protesting, and one of the parents gets up and he's like, "You know, we we should talk about the real issue. The real issue is child molestation." You can't even recognize these kids <laughs> in the mask. <laughs> and that's his entire statement, like two lines. And out of context, that sounds like so bizarre. <laughs> I think first of all, we should apologize even... for giggling after you mentioned yeah, yeah. child molestation. Because that's yeah. not why we're giggling. Wrongly perceived. Yeah. Okay. So uh, another interesting thing, because of all these anti-masker protests, no, that happened over this, like uh, again in the last three, four days, uh, over the last two, three days, even, is these three. Uh, one parent of a high school kid uh, showed up with two of his buddies uh, at the principal's office to make a citizen's arrest to the principal. They showed up with like Ziploc ties and shit and stuff. Okay, so they wanted to uh, basically arrest, get uh, do a citizen's arrest on the principal. Then the prince they showed up at, into his barge into his office. The principal like very calmly is like uh, the cops are like uh, these guys are like we're gonna uh, citizen arrest you and then call the cops. The citizen uh, principal is like yeah, yeah okay we'll call the cops. He goes out into the the main waiting area uh, picks up the phone, calls the cops, and these guys only run away. They're like, "Okay, okay, we probably we we want the but ones let's in the right. this... and they get arrested. They got arrested." But the citizens' arrest is, is there? I think in any democratic world, this this phrase is there. What does it actually mean? Can you just arrest someone? I mean, no, that's kidnapping, can't. then technically. It, it, it's a basically, I think. Uh... So this is my understanding of it. This comes from reading lots of crime novels, so it could be completely false, right? Uh, but, but my understanding of it is that citizen's arrest is what prevents it from being kidnapping. When you call it a citizen's arrest, but there is also something that's required to be done for it to be a citizen's arrest, which is as soon as you are in possession, as soon as you have taken custody of the people, you have to take them to the authority immediately. You cannot delay at all. If you delay, it becomes that's kidnapping. not a citizen's arrest. That's a dispute where you go to the police oh. station, except that you uh, no, no, physically no, no. held the guy. Let, let's say you are a thief or you are a this. I can take, I can catch you, and I can take you to the cops. That's a citizen's arrest. That's the uh, this right because otherwise, to uh, to uh, to prevent somebody from being able to move around or move uh, do anything, it's kidnapping only. Then at that point, yeah, exactly. I'm just thinking it's great fun to come with a lot of people fanfare and all say I'm arresting you. In the name of citizenship, <laughs> you know, I mean, who gives you the right? But by the way, we we skipped Teachers' Day, which was last Sunday. Uh, yes, it oh, was yesterday. Yesterday was Teachers' Day. It was Day, right? yesterday. We wanted to do something for Teachers' Day, no? Yeah, we didn't. We forgot to talk about it. We couldn't, as usual. You know, we go on talking, and we never reach the topic, and we missed the whole thing. And I was just arguing with somebody in the gym in the morning about Teachers' Day, and then they all start this whole thing about all teachers are great, and I. And I I'm like, there are lots of great teachers, and we must support teachers. It's a it's a struggling profession, and they you know look after your children, blah blah. blah. But there's also bad teachers. Let, let's not yeah. say they're not bad teachers. I mean, if they're not bad teachers, how do you explain the Taliban? What do their teachers do? Yeah. What do they come up with? Are they proud today? Well, I taught brother how to kill people and destroy women's rights and animals and everything else. I mean, come on, they have to be bad no. teachers. All the people who turn out to be absolutely filled with malice across the world had teachers at some point, had parents at some point, and they failed them. You can't say they didn't fail them. You can't say they are only people to be blamed, but they fail them. 
if tomorrow but my even, son is a complete crackpot, I have to take some blame, right? Yes, you do. Uh, but but even uh, uh, but but even when you look at uh, good schools and stuff like that, right? There's a percentage of good teachers. There's a percentage of crappy teachers, even in like good schools, right? I, I mean, like if you were to look at your 10th standard teachers right now and mark them good or bad, I'm guessing that you're going to be like 20% good, 20% awful, and like 50% indifferent. See, bad is a very tough word, but there have been a couple of teachers whose attitude have been so wrong for certain students. There are certain sensitive students who you cannot rubbish too much because yeah. you kill their psyche and their confidence. I've seen that in my own eyes. There are some kids who can deal with it and some kids who can't deal with it. They've got to be like a, they've got to be social scientists and psychologists at the same time. It's a very tough job, but you can't just brush everybody with the same brush. It doesn't yeah. work, right? So I'm saying that bad teachers, a few, very few, but not good teachers a lot. And I would say there are good. They're... I, I I'd say there are bad teachers. I I I I, I can think of a number of bad teachers, right? I mean, like again, from my time in school, uh, when I went to one of the better schools around there, I had some really good teachers, but I also had some teachers who were awful, right? I mean, like name in the some, sense that name a teacher without naming the teacher, uh, name the thing the teacher did which shows him to be a poor educationist. Uh, preference towards people who take tuitions with them. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that was a big thing. Yeah, that's like yeah. corruption. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, I mean, like, uh, that, that, that's a real thing. Uh, a teacher. But in the defense, they were paid so poorly that they sort of breeds that, right? Yeah, but I mean, like, that's not my fault, no. True. Uh, no, what I'm saying is this is a system, systemic, systematic failure, not just a. Uh, personality failure, character yeah. failure. It's a character flaw, of but, course. But there are, character, there, there are character failures as well. I mean, like, uh, I, there, there was a teacher who would come to school and you could smell the booze on him. Right? I mean, like, yeah, you could smell the booze on him. That's not a bad him. teacher. That's a fun teacher. Oh, I'm sorry. Home. My school started at 7.30 in the morning. If I can smell booze on you at 7.30 in the morning, not a good teacher. Hey, Amit, come on, what fun. Everybody else says, good morning, Mr. Sharma. And for this guy, you got to say, cheers, Mr. Sharma. Can you imagine it? Good morning. And he's like, Arre, keep quiet, keep yeah. quiet. I got to hang over. Like, Sabda, do big pala do, yaar. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't can, mind I... human, this human frailty thing is not such a big issue with me. Okay. I just don't, I felt that, um, what about teachers dealt, who pick, with, what about teachers who pick on kids? Right? Like, no, they, so there is a the kid that they, from, huh. No, so like just basically they know that this is a kid who they can pick on and use as an example to constantly put in front of the class. Now, that's humiliating to the kid. It's not a particularly uh, strong teaching method. But I've had teachers like that as well, right? Like And like not the same kid, right? In one class, they pick on this kid. In a different class, they pick on this kid. But always a kid who they knew they could kind of do all the shit with. Yeah, no, it's a tough one. The favoritism and the picking on, so those things are there. But by and large, I just think that it's like being a captain. It's not easy to captain in the army or in the sports field or whatever, or even in the corporate world. You're dealing with different people. You've got to deal with them a little differently. It can't just be like, you know, Hitlerian principles of see guile and follow me. So I'm, I'm thinking that's where they failed a lot. If you want to use the word failed. Felt yeah. that, uh, you know, what they could have done differently is deal with different... Amit, Silvery and Cyrus are three different personalities. There's a 10-15% difference in the way you treat them. Not better or for worse. Just how to get the best out of us. Mm. Each one has to get, have a different side. And that's a challenge as an educator. The, the, knowing the knowledge in the subject, you know, the, come on now with the kind of internet access you have, really, how much do you need? You just need to have passion for the subject. You can get the facts for yourself on your fingertips. So I think the balance, the, the battle is always to do with the connecting with the, with the person, the kid, the pupil. Silvery has disappeared on us, by the way. I, the moment I, I, spoke about I, I saw him put his finger up and then just cut his video off. Yeah, I'm guessing somebody be, attacked his room. No, no, no. I think he's developed uh, either hemorrhoids or uh, that urinary tract infection. I he's think he's had a... Uh, okay. Sorry, someone was knocking on my door. I just opened uh, it. Someone was knocking on your door in the middle of a live podcast? Your mom. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah nobody has any priorities. Have, That's what I've I been giving seven straight. different pieces of equipment one by one. I, I destroyed them all. I muted myself because I was shouting at them. To, I was setting them straight. Like, never disturb me again. Not during the podcast. <laughs> and now they will never will. <laughs> Yeah. You don't keep a sock on the handle of the door like <laughs> no. in the old days people having sex yeah. would do. So, yeah. you know, just, just to deter people from coming in because who the hell wants to open that door then, for God's sake. Anyway, coming back to teachers. Uh, so, yeah. So, I, I also felt that um, they, because they were probably underpaid and overworked, after some time, they reach a point where they're just doing the job. 
you know mm-hmm. the, the quality in the job goes from them and they are maybe in the west they've got a better model with the tenureship to look forward to and whatever whatever and they sort of they achieve more things here very often it becomes almost like a government job after some time and then you you know we kids make fun of them and yeah. just is like there is nothing it is a unifying great... factor bad teachers huh? close to a unifying factor where you hate on them and then you unify and they like become closer as friends well that's because... 100% true uh i i i know that is true uh we had a situation in our school uh in the 8th standard where basically uh like again you know it's a it's hard to kind of think of this stuff right uh but uh, very inappropriate conversations that the teacher had with a group of like students in the 8th 9th like, standard right like like could you specify uh, more specific ba- basically somebody had a porn video and the teacher decided to have a discussion with us about the porn video and about uh, who wanted to uh, and basically i love your teachers one uh, is yeah. a drunkard one is a <laughs> pornographer why wasn't i with this group of teachers i worship these teachers <laughs> no so basically somebody one of one of my friends got caught with it right and so then it was like oh how did you get this and then that guy basically spilled the beans and then like uh, six or seven or eight of us were all kind of made to have conversations with the teacher about this and i was just like this is not what you guys should be doing it's really no, it really it, was it an enlightened conversation what was the point of the conversation or was so it to the, catch you this is a conversation was kind of enlightened in some sense but it was just inappropriate right i mean like teacher should not be having this conversation with a uh, with, with a bunch of 14 year old boys it's just not it was just not the right conversation it was not a uh, yeah i think it'd be a bit unfair you you looking at uh, accountability and openness in that kind of culture and the guy is actually being a little more evolved about the situation saying let's discuss this because you're not teenage boys mm-hmm. and then you're saying no but it's awkward and why are we doing this but no, you guys was not awkward it was anyway so he was opening the book and saying let's talk it was not awkward sir i i i get the difference between having an awkward conversation or a conversation about sexual education as opposed to an inappropriate conversation i understand the difference over there and this was definitely on the inappropriate side it was a it, w- it was a strange thing so he was more but he was trying to be helpful and, and the script and the sort of angles that of that were used for the shooting is is that it, it, sort of survey yeah it just it it, it kind of it felt a little off it just, just just the whole thing was a little off it it just was not it it, it felt uh, yeah man it it just was not the right conversation to have with 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 uh, uh, silvery and me will agree that amit you had you had a lot of trauma in your in your education in your childhood growing <laughs> up i mean you've been exposed to things that i mean i feel really bad now mine was pretty okay silvery yours okay. was okay none of this yeah, happened right? Well, right no porn I discussion mean, no. <laughs> 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 I, luckily i didn't get caught in school at 7:30 in the morning hey, hey, oh, wow. you know the crazy i i don't even think it was porn right i think it was just like adult movie right it wasn't even porn i think it was like I, I think it was like some Chinese, single it, it's something Porkies. like that. I think I think it was something like that. I don't think it was like real porn or anything like that. It was uh, it was I th- was there a movie called Screwballs or something like that? I think it might have been that. It was it was something like Bro, relatively. Let's talk about it. Let's have an open discussion. Silvery has no idea what we're talking about. We grew up in a generation where you went from single X first from family movies to single X. Single X is is just like <sighs> topless, nothing more than that, and that was very the shots were quick and fast generally. Then you went to double X, which was everything except the the lower area, and then you you went finally to well what we have today, French cinema, shall we call it? Yeah, <laughs> in all its glory. So we actually graduated. So I'm I don't know if I was a teacher. It's a tough one. Would I be the more open, flexible, let's chat a thing because it's just sex and you need people to not not get you know overact, overreact, or should you just you know take the i have to penalize these people and stop them because you know this is not a good thing etc cetera, etc cetera. and objectifying women demeaning women wrong especially for 12 year olds 13 year olds so it's a tough one i think no, i i'd a, have to watch it, the porn and then decide no so it, it's definitely a tough one in some sense right but i think that there is a uh, uh th- there is a way to have a conversation about uh just education about sex and like what that's about and this was not that conversation the one that i had this doesn't need to be a therapy session but uh, th- this was a very different kind of conversation there was something you're a bit you're a bit of a misanthrope there's always a little tragedy to all these stories in a way uh, you know the, you no, have a perspective i feel bad for either the teacher or the students uh, my story is a tragedy 
there's no real tragedy because uh, the group of people who got caught out and this are like my closest friends right now, right? I mean, like it was like what Antrish was saying, like that us versus them kind of thing. It kind of came out to some to, to some degree. So let me concur with Silvery. The moral of the story is Amit's closest friend came out of this incident because once you realize this guy had access to porn, porn. they were friends for life. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, who's the most popular boy in class? The guy with the elder brother who has all the magazines. You know, of course, growing up, of course, our magazines are gone. Uh, now it all changed. You guys are so lucky, Silvery. Yeah, it, it, it was a ball by ball play for us, like in a sport, man. Whose brother had access? Whose family? Whatever. The, the, I had a pal called Vikram. He was a big gun, man. We, we had to go to Vikram's house to get stuff because his elder brother Praveen had everything. And you know, I mean, well, you guys didn't have great. the at, at your time. Did you guys have the the train station thing under the train station? You go tell the guy need a need the adult wala CD, and then he give you like oh, no. basically like a. Sorry, I couldn't no? hear that. Okay, so like. Uh, during my day in school there used to be a thing where if you went under like andheri station ka uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The bridge right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we we, we had it in guys. yeah yeah there we, we had in the mountain guys. there's a famous guy uh, ah, exactly. and the bandra station also had yeah, yeah. i'm sure every station had stuff. you got to find the guy yeah. yeah and and i think uh, what they would do is they would bring out the stuff for special customers like once you became a special customer you you know you were the elite group Oh, uh, the Raj Kundra <laughs> group of customer who would then you know the get access. All the video library people have. I thought all the video library folks had. Yeah, I think it's possible they did like not Shemaru and all. They I feel like them. they all had. But I remember Balbir at Video Jazz. We we couldn't go and tell him until uh, Rajiv's elder brother came with us once, and he had the conversation. and then the, then we could have a conversation alone with him so there was a there was uh, a process like membership in a club you couldn't just walk in it's like reference you need want, like yeah need a need a reference <laughs> you had to have that intro that intro was important <laughs> guys should we take a break 33 yes, minutes into this yes technologically yes. challenged show and then we have a very funny screening. story yeah we have a very funny story coming up yeah and we are back See? right that is okay are we back from the break right. yes yes please yes. Oh, okay <laughs> okay we're back and uh, we- the best story out this week for me is about serial egg attacks that have taken place in chicago okay in and around chicago uh, basically in the dozens like close to like they say like 60 people or something have been attacked ar- around this point okay uh, where a, a white van a white van is shown driving by and then suddenly uh, people are just pelted with eggs like around who are like standing around okay people have been hit in their face people have been hit in their legs like all over their bodies and uh, so this started happening like a few months back back as far back as february of this year and because of this some person made a facebook group called uh, chicago egg hunters okay and these guys made it their mission like you know like this is like a the hunt for a serial killer man like how they uh, try to analyze everything they the, all the pictures that have been taken of the van like how do you figure the how whose van it is they finally got the number of it like uh, like last week or last last week they, they got the number plate and were able to track down the owner of the van who which was like some home furniture company and they had like a series of vans and then those oh, that, the those vans also had like no motivation Why just like mischief done? just just mischief just mischief literally This guy was uh, one of the uh, part-time drivers for this f- furniture company, and uh, I think like on his downtime, he was just <laughs> driving around pelting people with eggs. Uh, <laughs> but the way they thing, found Amit, him was very interesting. Is Amit, because yeah. uh, he couldn't have been Jane, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Or maybe he was. He was like, I don't need, no, I don't need these eggs. I hate eggs. No, but they can't. They're destroying the egg. Can't do that. Yeah, yeah, you can't destroy the egg. Egg. You can't touch the You're egg. You're destroying the oh. egg. Now the egg is life, They're potential destroying. life. That's yeah. I think the thing. But, but during Holi in the nineties, we used to have egg fights in my lanes and all. I so carry those eggs, that. eggs and tomatoes, and tomatoes yeah. really hurt more than eggs. Yes, they did. They stung if they hit your face area and all that. Uh, so we had that. I must say, so have been exposed to egg fights. Um, it's a terrible thing. I mean, hit by an egg, it's so yucky. And to clean yeah. yourself, it's all that eggy, sticky stuff. For me, sticky stuff like orange squash and eggs and all are the worst. It's one of the worst, yeah. So, e- eggs and uh, the other one I remember that people used to do, which used to be awful, right? Was that they would treat that uh, silver color with oil, and then yeah. that shit never came off. Never came off, man. Really, 
Oh yeah. God! And you'd be just two, three boys in the class would have those marks for the bloody week yeah. that followed. Every else was everyone else was civilized enough to come clean the next day. But you can't yeah. take it off, yeah. and it's always on your arms or faces where you can yeah. be seen for yeah. whatever reason. But coming back to sticky stuff, uh, finally my wife succumbed to my uh, begging and bought me condensed milk, the greatest thing after air conditioning the world has ever seen. And I can't resist condensed milk. But the problem with is with it is that it's very sticky. It's also in that group of five, six things which takes a long time to clean properly. It just yeah. has that sticky texture to it, so you can't just get on with life. You have to go and wash immediately. But that's I the problem. Like, what, what, do you like eat just condensed milk like that? I mean, like you know what I do? Like... Milk made. It's in a new uh, blue colored thing. Looks a little uh-huh. different. I just spear it and I sip it. And what are you then talking? After four, five sips, I stop and tell myself too much fat, and I. Um, I tried to control myself but yesterday. Yeah. I think I had maybe a third of the can in one shot because glug 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 glug. Forget the fat, the sugar, man, the sugar on something wow. like that's got to be insane. Your volume has come back. Your volume is fabulous. I don't have to strain anymore. Let's start the show again, please. Please, can we start again? What 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 happened? You're very clear. Your voices. Okay. I had aged seven years there because especially since I couldn't hear you. Delivery was even better, but now suddenly you're very clear. What is the reason? I do not know. I, I really don't. Know. I think so. Uh, but but dude, uh, condensed milk is like insanely sweet, right? I mean, like, how can you eat that okay. much of it? Okay, now see, now you're saying all the wrong things. Don't say the wrong things. Yeah, of course, it's insanely sweet. It's a nectar of the gods. Please understand, it is the highest form of food. Okay, now you can't tell me about fat and all that because you, how do you do that? How do people do that? How do they at the point when they're eating the pizza discuss? Yeah, yeah, both. Uh, yeah, hoga, yeah, calories both. Are. How do you do that? Dude, no, no. no. But dude, you're saying that Aisha is starting to get you condensed milk, which makes me think no, that's no. a regular thing. I that's have happening. been begging. No, I have been begging my mom for the last few months in the lockdown. There's something to cheer myself up is condensed milk because I only went to Dubai, did that show, and got a real huh. taste of condensed milk after years. And I just, I just love it. Even now, I'm thinking of it. Now that we're talking about it, I'm feeling happy. You see my face? It's glowing. <laughs> look, there's got to be three, four foods in everybody's life, which is just yeah. they're like therapeutic. They're beyond fat and thin, you know. I mean, they make you happy. My understanding. Why saying. can I can I give you my theory on my own father? And please, I don't want people to write bad letters and abuse us. It's slightly it is controversial. I believe my dad should have never stopped smoking. He was a smoker from the age of sixteen till about five years ago when uh, we said enough because of his neuropathy and his dwindling senses and you know neuropathy is like it's like almost like a cancer. It just destroys right. you slowly. So, but the moment he gave up the cigarettes, Amit, I mean, he just. declined i'm i'm clear they, they played a very important role people only look at it from the point of view of the lungs and all that else but it's right. a crack which psychologically really keeps people happy i'm telling you and the same thing with kunal he became very cranky after the cigarettes went out of his life yeah Now, but kunal is young enough that he should stop it's good that he stopped i don't know if it's worth it bro i I'm, i'm he stopped 5 I'm, years ago dude I, dude i'm 100% just worth it No, no, no. Saying, I don't know if it's worth it in the long run for someone who gets enjoyment. There is a therapeutic benefit and a spiritual benefit and a connect. Like maybe I have a weight training. Okay, I'm not going to be the world's greatest bodybuilder, but I love it so much. You take it away from me, I, I get very depressed. The same thing. I'm just thinking that crutch effect sometimes might outweigh the health uh, health ill effects if, if I may put right. it that way. You know, I, I, people don't think it through. It's just like you can't even mention it. How dare you? Because cigarettes are so bad, so bad. Cancer, this, that, lung. But I'm just thinking, my father dwindled and declined after the cigarettes. I saw it in my yeah. own eyes. And all his life, he was fine. I mean, whatever other problems he had, you know, your your mind is you're happy. That happy soul state is there with these things. Yeah. And in both these cases, I notice the difference. I'm not saying you shouldn't you, that smoking is a good thing. I hate smoking. Can't bear the smell myself. But I'm just thinking sometimes maybe we need to look at this from different perspectives. That's all. I, Now I, I, I please guess. don't write into us and tell us how bad we are. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I hear what you're saying. saying. It's, it's a theory, but it's not as rubbishy as you think it is. No, because it's you not can complete. see the person close up. The, listen, there's a reason why cigarettes are so tough to quit, right? I mean, like because there is a tremendous psychological aspect to it. So I get that. Uh, 
I, I, I guess I hear what you're saying, but I don't know how you can know the situation, right? Because the thing is that cigarettes themselves are so generally bad for you almost always in almost all circumstances that these few exceptions that the one that you're describing might is probably makes sense that this would be an exception, right? But how do you know that that's the exception? Like if, uh, I don't know, it, it's hard to kind of say that this would be like, you know, in this situation, yeah, we should allow cigarettes. I don't know. I think it's custom made. Life is custom made. We're yeah. generalizing too much. Everything is generalized now. You know, this is bad for you. Egg whites are egg yolk is bad for everyone. This is bad for everyone. I think you've got to look at it custom made and see what the what the pros and cons are. Yeah, I agree. I think I'd make a great doctor without a degree. I think I should apply for it. <laughs> is there a way to get a title for podcasting? You know, like doctor, yeah, like sure. Doctor, we can we can try PhD. and get you. Yeah, we can you get you like an honorary PhD. Honorary PhD for podcasting. And yes. then, like, yeah. I think our people are the only people in the world who keep that doctor title in their visiting cards and all, very proudly. <laughs> Every, everywhere else. You know, yeah, the, yeah. Nobody writes a degree, you're right, yeah. yeah nobody says Dr. Bill Gates, although he's he ha happy to be called that now. <laughs> he's a naughty Bill Gates, as he's become of late. Yeah, anyway, that was my theory. I, I don't want to talk about it more, but if you ever get a cigarette smoker or someone wants to discuss it or a psychiatrist, I'm very happy to discuss this again. Because, it, it, like I said, it's a controversial thing, and I don't want someone to uh, say that. Oh, you're saying my dad should uh, not uh, should continue smoking? How dare you? And all that. So you know, it's completely a very personal thing that I'm talking. Yeah, about. it's it's a uh, your mile may vary, uh, your mileage may vary type thing, right? So I mean, like everybody's thing is over here going to be different, but at the same time, I, I grew up with my. You grow up with your parents. I see the spark going from him because of the damn cigarettes going, and I'm wondering whether it's worth it. That's it. For one year, better quality life, or whatever. In any case, it's declined with the neuropathy, and he's in a yeah. wheelchair, and his mind is gone almost. So, I mean, what is the difference? Might as well just, you know, have that happiness quotient which the cigarettes gave. It gave a certain, I don't know, tranquility, if you may, or you know, certain calm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, you're right. In this case, it probably might have been the right the choice to make to kind of have him continue smoking. But again, how do you decide that that's the right choice to make five years ago? Because again, let's say you all decided to ask him to quit smoking no, at the that time. Said no way. The doctor said no way he can continue with the neuropathy advancing. You know, yeah. There's no way he can smoke because you can't have uh, the lungs uh, will you collapse immediately Every, because oh. it attacks everything. So, you know, you I mean, that, you can't go against some leading doctor who's charging you so much. I would have died of a heart attack. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's another story. Yeah, so, the, the, so, and again, the doctor is giving his best advice, right? In that sense, that he thinks that the neuropathy would advance much quicker with the smoking. And also, Correct. I'm, I'm going to guess that uh, fire hazard also a little bit, because if your dad is not having the same kind of control over his limbs yeah. that he used to. I didn't think of that, but yeah, definitely. It would be an option. But also, how will you call the bluff of the doctor? Are you going to challenge the doctor who tells you that? If the doctor tells you point blank, no way, yeah, are you going to challenge you him? We don't, I mean, yeah. It's a tough one. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so I'm not encouraging people to smoke, but I'm saying, uh, or drink, but I'm saying do a little bit of marijuana. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <Don't do that>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shall we go to the AMS? The AMS? Yeah, let's go to the AMS. All right. AMS, the first one comes in from Chinmay Mishra. He has a very interesting comment. He says, in, in my postgraduate days, a teacher admired me for my creative approach despite the wrong solutions. Then a different teacher gave me full marks for my solution and wrote, please follow methods in ta I taught in class. So that's like in completely... postgraduate? In postgraduate days, yeah, I guess. Wow, that's okay, that's strange. I can understand that, like, you know, in school, teacher would say, follow the methods I teach you, but in postgraduate, I'm surprised that they would ask you no, to follow the just, same methods. It's simple uh, difference in philosophy, hmm. either whichever way you look at it. There are those who like innovative process and free thinking, and there are those who want it to be same old, same old, and follow the dis disciplinary code. Um, I don't know. I, I would go for the former because that's how ideas get reshaped. Uh, new yeah. ones come in, right? Yeah. No, I I think what he's saying is that uh, but th that he sees different. Talking about bad teachers, teachers, right? You're just talking yeah, about yeah. Just teachers, they're, they're different kinds of teachers, right? Some of them are. Uh, uh, you know, they think that the solution is wrong, but the approach was interesting. So they'll talk about the approach. But then there are others where the answer is right, but the approach is different. And then they're like, no, I don't, uh, you know, I, you get the marks, but do this. Right? So th it's it's how rigid the teacher is, right? I, I, I would clearly prefer the first one as well, right? Uh, somebody who is uh, willing to discuss stuff. 
But so for me, this is not the issue with the teachers anyway. Okay, they each had their whatever way of they've got it a tunnel vision or open vision or whatever. But I think it's how you deal with the person, the man management or kid management thing, which is all which you can't maybe you can't teach that. You know, I, I just I felt that you know. Well, okay, can we go back to what we've discussed? That so many kids from our schools growing up are not doing so well as we thought they would. Who, who, you know, some of the girls who did really well do have done nothing much with their lives, for example, without being sexist. Some of the guys who did really well are just you know in dead end jobs, uh, and yet some of the others flowered who didn't. You who thought you you really thought would suffer in society, and then they flowered post. So it's almost like they just didn't have the right people around them, and then they flowered later. So in that sense. What was missing was the mentor, the guy, the guru. I would say to some extent. Plus, so, yeah, I'd agree with that. But I would also say that I mean, like you know, academic performance is a really poor indicator of personal performance yeah. in life, right? I mean, mm -hmm. like the two are, they 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 may be somewhat linked, but the linkages are not really that strong. Yeah, and in any case, you're looking at primary stuff, and what you graduate in is you know it's completely different in any case. So right. excelling in those six average obvious subjects. In an average way, it doesn't really give you a parameter. But, yeah. but uh, so so, how, what would you say? Sixty percent good teachers, seventy percent good teachers? Or it's a tough mm. thing to say. I, I would not say that. I I, I think of how many teachers <laughs> do I think of fondly right now from my school, right? And I would say maybe two or three. I would say another two or three. I would like a little bit more. But for the most part, most of the teachers were like, you know, they were doing a job. And I mean, like, you know, their job was to teach you how to kind of do this, right? And it wasn't really, they had no passion for it. They were not really particularly inspiring about it. The, it's not all. Again, I'm not saying that all teachers are bad or anything like that. But I'm also saying that this fetishization of teachers happens yeah. to a great degree yeah. because there are some who are amazing and who will have an impact on your life in ways that you cannot even imagine. But Correct. the vast majority are not that. Yeah, this, this, this. Why do we do this? You know, this with seniors also. You know, power, 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 and all. Mm -hmm. There's so many horrible people who are aged. You know, yeah. who all their lives done bad things to the next generation, to people around them, exploit the vendor, exploit the staff, exploit the uh, relatives, exploit the wife and kids, whatever. I'm just saying, and then you go and touch the guy's feet or the. You know, what I mean, I, yeah. and I'm just thinking, shouldn't it? Where's the meritocracy in all this? In India, there's no meritocracy feeling. You go get anything on merit. I, I say, celebrate the great teachers. Proven to be a great teacher. Thousands of people say I've been inspired. I became the next uh, Bill Gates thanks to this teacher. Whatever, great. But you know, we are just looking at it as generic things always. Teachers, old people. You know, in any industry, you have the older actors, the older producers. You know, why? Some of them have done rubbish stuff all their lives. Yeah. And yet we want to, you know, sit there and put flowers around them. That's all I'm saying. I, I think we we need more meritocracy in this country on merit I, with respect. I agree 100 percent with that. This podcast on merit deserves no respect as of now. So we expect nothing from you people. Say nothing. And least of all criticism because we can't deal with it. All, all right. right. Next, Next one, one uh, comes in from Kashin Shetty. He says, since Ganesh Utsav is around the corner and people are already are also back on the streets, are you dreading the noise and traffic jams that will follow? I am only worried for Amit because people have no money to buy and make a, a Ganesh at home and all that. And they might just grab the Largest guy walking around, Amit Kunal. These kind of guys be very careful. Okay, don't stray near Marine Drive or Wali Sea Face or Varsova Creek. Um, but uh, isn't it under control, Silvery? Isn't there some so supposedly four a group of four or eight or something like that, that they've come up with, which I know I will not, not happen. I'm, I'm not but, aware of that. Is if that's the thing? Is that is that right? Yeah. Is this they, the number, number of people that can go for Visarjan together or something? Or it can't, get. A uh, Ganpati. I'm, I'm sure there's a. So, like, communal okay. Ganpati is not allowed over this year. Like, uh, I don't in your society, think so. I think are you there. telling me, like, like a scene from uh, Agnipat or one of those, you know, you know, Hindi films we've seen them, where, you Good know, question. Where, I, I, I don't know the answer. We'll find out as the next couple of this goes along, oh. right? I don't know what the restrictions are. I know temples are open almost across the city right now. But they can't have 10,000 people on the beach front at the same time, no? Huh? But I they already did, not. like just a couple of days back. I'm forgetting where in Bombay, but there were like a massive crowd and it was being reported about on uh, in Mumbai only. Uh, Ari Baba, that was at 10 o'clock to listen to our podcast. When they, uh -huh, yeah, right. issues yeah. are there, they all come, yeah. come to one house yeah. and all come that. together you know, to listen to our podcast. Know, together. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But 
I, I look, uh, Ravi Shastri tested positive. Okay, uh, the coach, Indian coach, ex cricketer, etc., and a couple of others. They just went for a cricket uh, a book launch, uh, and a lot of people have got it there. All right, but in England, they seem to have uh, taken it this way that you know, as long as you're not going to die or whatever, we'll just carry on with the thing. You just stay at home for ten days, check again, and we'll move on. So that double vaccine is it working for the for the third strain, Delta, Delta, whatever it may be? We don't know. And but but they've taken slightly more, if you like, practical, mature approach. But can we do it with ten thousand, twenty thousand people? Uh, if any of you have lived around Marine, I mean, we too have. And uh, Silvery, I'm sure you've you've seen some part of Bombay, wherever you've been. When it's at its peak, I mean, that's not. <laughs> to be honest, uh, uh, even the celebrations in the Kumbh uh, will pale. Ganesh Utsav at its peak on the big days on the tenth, eleventh uh, day. Um, yeah, so like BC, there are no yeah. processions. No processions. I'm, I'm oh. just looking at the rules right now. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm no processions. So, so how many people the gauri day one or day two when they put the gauri in? Uh, generally, that's a very controlled thing. In any case, generally it's not got huge crowds because you're two, three family, people. You're so family. Yeah, and even the family, you, you, you normally at least the people I've grown up with, there only two or three of them actually go in. You know, in in the normal uh, situation, so it could be down to one. But what happens on the big Ganesh Utsav day? I'm not sure. Vishajan day, I'm saying, I'm not sure because if and there'll be enough family, people who don't follow the rules, there'll be enough people on the road still doing the processions. They'll be like, "Arey, I wasn't aware only." And this is the thing. I'm sure that's going to happen. How could it not? Well, they've been policing with such brutality when it comes to me walking my dogs. So they can handle all these things. They again, religious, the religious right? They can't. They can't do anything, man. Religious people no, get angry. Again, if they they, pick fights. If, but if they are going to, uh, if if they are uh, uh, clamping down on the pandals themselves, right? Like at the, the pandals, they're the saying show. no, yeah. no bhajan, no this, no, no, no artis, uh, mm -hmm. no crowds for that kind of stuff. Anybody who's coming for darshan has to do like you know temperature scan and all that kind of stuff. They're asking for all that kind of stuff. So I mean, like you know, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, that's it. See, darshan can be controlled to some extent. I'm worried about the procession, the dancing, the chanting, all that. That's when yeah. people, you know, uh, it becomes just mayhem. Uh, they're saying no processions. We'll see how that plays out. I hope that was a 2021 article and not a 2020 article. Yeah, it is a 2021 article. Right. Which sadly uh, is the same as a 2020 article. So we've gone over. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, next one, Saras comes uh, from Saksham Chug. He asks, uh, how do you see the match today ending with uh, England required to make almost 290 runs on day five? Oh, this is just great test cricket. Uh, if I may bore everybody to death for 30 seconds, just fabulous going to the fifth day, all three results possible. What, what more can you ask for? I think both teams have played good cricket. And sometimes I just like to look from outside and stop being, you know, so partisan. It's so easy to just get partisan in uh, India, India, whoever you're supporting. Sometimes it's just good to look from outside and say, it's good cricket, good sport. This is why sport is fun when you compete and everything is possible and it, it looks like a 50-50. It's almost like a 50-50 right now. Even though uh, India should be noses ahead because uh, they're, well, England batting last. But I, I think, I, I would say 40-60, India 60, England 40 at the moment. But good, good game of course, cricket. Can't complain. You, Cannot you, complain. You, you if you're going to for this, it's worth it. Sorry? I've always wondered about that, right? I mean, like you're saying right now, India 60%. So you're saying it's easier for India to get 10 wickets than for England to hold out? Well, if history is any kind of yardstick, and we know history is a fool, um, the fifth day, the fifth day's play is always going to favor, in a test match, it's going to favor, generally speaking, almost 90% plus the bowling side. Okay, but they you only had 30 wicket. wickets in four days, and now you're saying 10 wickets right. in one day? So, so, so traditionally, the wickets should deteriorate. The fifth, fourth, and fifth day, and especially the fifth day, the spinner should come into it. The wicket deteriorates, so it turns, it the bounces up and down, all that, and the pressure of uh, trying to chase a score, and it's a big score. But of late, the last few years, these wickets have remained uh, consistent for five days, very often, especially wickets like the Oval. So England have a definitely have a chance, but still India 60-40. We still have the pace attack. We don't have a coach. Our coach is in quarantine. We're coachless. We have to rise up now. So, if there's any Desi walking around the Oval in Surrey uh, who's played even club cricket, you can apply for temporary coach for a few days. They desperately need someone. So, please go ahead and motivate our boys. But like I said, I just like it. Uh, I mean, you like your basketball. When you, are, when you have a game which goes down to the wire and uh, two teams play, it's a real dogfight. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Team, don't you? I mean, that's… You, you know, you, you, the bar has been raised and you feel good, you know, at the end of it. Either way. I mean, you would feel bad, but uh, because you're invested in your team. But having said that, you actually appreciate. It's almost like poetry. You appreciate. It. So 
So I'm I'm very happy that the, this test match has really come alive. And 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 have you guys been following Jabo, the YouTuber? He's this fat English uh, y- uh, guy who jumps onto the field and pretends to be part of the Indian team with Jarvo written there. And she, I don't know how he breaks <laughs> security. It's just amazing. He's done it like two times now, and they banned him for life, and he came back the second time. Unbelievable. But just for just for his YouTube hits, just to get some uh, eyeballs. He just he just joined the team, huh? This big white guy comes okay. and joins the team in the huddle, and they're all talking. I, I don't know how Mahmud Dilak is saying. Who is this? I took that. I could pick that up on the stump mic. Who is this? Because like, how? The, I mean, you know all your support staff. Even the yeah, yeah. Even the guys from the ECB will, the TTB will also give you some guys from their side to help you. So you know all the the English guys as well who are in your support staff. This guy just came and joined the team, and you know, yeah, day before yesterday he came in bold. With a yellow ball, I think a tennis ball or something. He just came in bowl. They were all taking their fielding positions. He came in bowl and he banged into Johnny Besto uh, in hmm. his follow through, uh, which upset the Johnny Besto, the English batsman. <laughs> Only in England, since I was a young kid, we had streakers. I mean, both of them was banned for cannabis use, and there was this uh, topless model, who, a top woman topless, yeah, starters. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, we bring back both of them sign. comes and who's batting gavaskar and shrikant and i remember gavaskar puts his gloves over shrikant's eyes and all one of the funniest <laughs> moments <laughs> like he's too young that was a hilarious guy yeah it was a beautiful moment and the commentators were they were on the floor in this shot of the see may i say she was a pretty girl All the eleven fielders, the two umpires, and our two boys are all smiling. <laughs> no one is like, "Oh, terrorist!" Everyone is like, "A small glint of a smile." Everybody is, you know, no one's really upset. And you can think, ninety percent heterosexual male population watching. No one's really upset. She's a pretty girl with a top, no top, a topless, and with a bring back bottom sign. That is a beautiful moment. Then the cows can go and cover Shikhan's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what fun! Yeah. Can we do one England last one? Then, yeah. Uh, Girish Patel uh, asks. Uh, he says basically, uh, Allahabad High Court said cow is the only animal that exhales and inhales oxygen. Hence, it should be made the national animal and protected and given fundamental rights. Opinion, please. So basically, if you're not aware, uh, the Allahabad High Court <coughs> basically. uh the, the case was about uh, a muslim man was accused of uh, cow slaughter uh, but then while his bail hearing was going on and while giving the guy bail the allahabad high court said that uh, uh, we'll only have like actual like peace and order in india once cow has been declared uh, the national animal and has been given fundamental uh, rights so and really- the irony would be that the muslim man here doesn't have any fundamental rights we go straight to the bovine and <laughs> we start there <laughs> that that's that's one way of looking at it yeah uh, although of course i'm against any slaughter i will not endorse slaughter of any kind but um what do we the mis mistaken sort of zeal with which uh, we are supposed to protect the cow has not helped the cow at all if you look at come to walkeshwar i mean we'll show you the temples you see the cows outside the bad condition they're in and all that i mean this is all tokenism and symbolism they they, they don't really help any animals not the elephant or oh, ganesh is a symbol of that no not the cow not all the other animals in our epics and uh, you know uh, traditions that are present so that, that that is something which doesn't correlate at all at the end of the day so this is all just some sort of dogma that they're trying to push down people's throat and it's a little yeah. sad um hey, what, but, what what's really sad about it more than anything else is coming from the high court right i guess that's the thing that it's uh, the fact that uh, judge is are saying you still surprise i mean It's 2021. By now, the surprise is gone from all this. I, I'm not but surprised, you... but that doesn't mean that you're that I'm not disappointed by it. I I don't know what to say sometimes. I yeah. mean, you know, because it, it's just like infantile. If you actually yeah. you can't even process it beyond a point and think, you know, this is what you're really saying. Was he the only animal that breathes in oxygen, breathes out oxygen? I mean, where is he basing this uh, study on? Uh. Oh. So just that, making stuff up no no so uh, you know the i i passed this comment in our show which is uh, which i thought was correct to say because you know we are making fun of the taliban and we're all joking about it and everybody finds it funny right all of us democracies look down on that ridiculous medieval crap that they uh, practice and say what what a rubbish society they're going to usher in and how bad it's going to be and then we have stories in uh, in india like this one and the other one in karnataka 
in Karnataka, there's a temple which said non Hindu drivers can't park the car in the area. So, if you have a, you come to pray, the drivers say Muslim or Christian or whatever else, they can't park the car, they have to go outside. So, I'm thinking, are you really going to blame the Taliban? I mean, we, we have our own version of the Taliban. I mean, uh, this philosophy is exactly the same. You know, uh, we have we we have the I, I mean like Mathura became vegetarian, right? I mean what uh, yeah, what is that about man? That's insane. It just it makes no sense. It's it's yeah. insane. It's like, and no uh, alcohol, huh? no alcohol, but he suggested milk. He suggested milk. I love that suggestion. He's you're talking to drunkards. The last thing they want to drink is milk. Can you imagine? Yeah. So half the restaurants, there'll be so many unhappy people now in Mathura. Half the restaurants yeah. can't serve their food. Uh, people can't make non at their own homes and all this is ridiculous. It's also, uh, Silvery, it's also towards one community by and large. You know, the, 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 you know, it's just polarizing. It's almost like we'll just take away your no, culture. But it's, 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 really, it's actually not really polarizing. It's, really uh, it's not just one community because, again, there was a really interesting article uh, about this. And again, this is not unknown, right? 70% of India is non-vegetarian. This is not unknown. Yeah. India is only a 30% veg country. So uh, well, When you say f- that, if you look at that from a, a point of view, I've, I've seen these articles. It's also the fact that they eat meat, but they eat it rarely. Because it's expensive, yeah. they can't afford it, blah, blah, blah. So it's like once a week on Saturday, it's a big deal. But no, so but it's a, it's a caste thing. No, but it's a caste thing, right? It's not just it's a Mus- it's it's a Muslim and upper class. Uh, sorry, uh, it's a Muslim only the Brahmins, and lower class. Only the Brahmins and the Jains, that's it. if you that's want. It. That's it. And then people who are who give it up because of animal love, which is now. We have a small yep. segment doing that. It's a fastest that's, growing one. That's relatively low, right? I mean, like in that sense. No, I mean, like, it, uh, vegan is the fastest growing uh, type of uh, sure. whatever you want to call it. Yeah, but uh, the two is double of one, right? So that's hundred percent growth. So it, it's just a smaller base leads to a quicker uh, growth rate in that sense, right? Uh, but I, uh, the, the the thing over here, it's just it's crazy. It's just insane. So if you're an Uber driver in Karnataka next to that mandir, you can't pick up the and see you're non-Hindu. You can't pick up the customer. You've got to say, sir, I can't come there. Then he has to meet you somewhere outside. In which case. I mean, where do you start the meter from? Also, because you come all the way there and then they send you back out. And so, I, I, I mean, like, honestly, uh, forget a parking lot. Even a temple should not be restricted to the religion. I believe this very thoroughly, very truly. I forget agree with the, you. But Parsi temples don't allow non-Parsis in. So much so, that yeah, we had a photographer for one on one uh, Navroz where me and Perizad uh, Kola, famous model oh. TV actress, we were shooting something for, for the, obviously for the paper. And the photographer walked in the steps and he came slightly inside the Agyari proper. And the, the so he told him, please, you have to go. You're not passing. You please, you get out, get out. And that guy said, but uh, do kutta hai, uh, uh, Agyari uh-huh. And mm-hmm. he said, they are Parsi. You are not Parsi. <laughs> 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 this is the man-made effect of everything. What are you going to do? Hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I find... Mathura, what we'll have it KFC in Mathura. Yeah, great question. But they can't call it KFC if they serve paneer, na? It's Kentucky Fried Kentucky Chicken. Fried, yeah, Kentucky Fried pa- Paneer Ma- now. Yeah. Mathura Dried Paneer, MDP. <laughs> <laughs> There's literally yeah. no point in having a KFC now in Mathura. There's literally no but point. Your, there are your like three veg very... options in the entire menu or something. No, your, point, your point is a very scary point. Because uh, you're talking about people's business is not being just from 100 to 0. You know, yeah. if they're in the meat business or the alcohol business for that matter, what do they yeah, turn absolutely. to immediately? You, you, you just said, that's it, it's out. 300 years of serving alcohol or whatever there, you know, running a business or distillery or what, what oh, it's scary. I mean, I mean, shouldn't there be like, you can't make these uh, kind of ordinances overnight. I mean, it's too quick. So yeah, like, shouldn't there be voting on this, something this, this important in life? Procedure and the public exactly. fight and all, so that I we have a voice. Idea. I, I just I don't understand how. Uh, so I uh, I have some like you know deep seated opinions around this stuff, right? I mean, like I think that uh, you should not be able to create a rule of this nature. Period. It should be against the. It should be against any kind of law to create this kind because it's a discriminatory rule. I or like I believe like I really strongly believe like temples. Like I'm saying, right? If you're a temple, anybody should anybody can walk into it. You're a public spot. You're a public space. You're a public space means public can use you, right? I think the housing market, right, where people say that this is a Hindu society or a Jain society or a Muslim society or a Parsi society. I don't think that's yeah, a problem. Rubbish. rubbish. Because if, if you are taking the benefit of the Indian common marketplace, which you are, all I of mean, you are... Fr- 
then you have to allow every if, indian citizen to if participate the constitution is the is the bylaw by which we sit and you know swear allegiance then in a, there's no way you can have societies which are segregated it I just agree. against everything the, the first page preamble stands yeah. so i i i totally agree with you so yeah. we need to take, uh, yeah. need to seize power i also get very scared people don't take this seriously even chief ministers during this uh, pandemic with their super powers just make these mandates and speeches with well, us to the pm and all, all the cms as well telling you what you can and cannot do i just feel that they are dictators we have a parliamentary procedure that has been followed if we, if you going to make one pigeon fly from one pole to the other pole it should be 200 people that that's But, democracy right see see this is a problem uh, so again you know this fundamentally comes down to one problem which is there in india is that we are still too functional on british administration and laws british administration and laws were created to subjugate a population they were created to keep a population under control they were not created to empower your population right and what we are stuck with right now is a set of laws which allows the epidemiology act allows the chief minister to do this right and uh, until there is a new one written and I've, if i'm not mistaken this act was written in 1850 or something like that until there's a new one written there is no way that you can take those powers away suppose we have parliamentary democracy parliamentary procedures should triumph everything that's why we have yeah, a representative but, in parliament we have to go to and pro for every small thing and if the cost is of course that we nothing gets passed for years but that cost is bearable because they cannot yeah. dictate and bully you at the end of the yeah. day you just they just make these ordinances up patora non vegetarian cancel daru cancel in overnight businesses are closed people have lost their livelihood get the hell out i mean what the fuck is that sound right Then you might have seen Kim Jong Un. Kim Jong Un does that. What's the difference? It's, it's anti-freedom, right? It's anti the. Yeah. It's anti-individual rights, and I just I have an issue. So yeah, tomorrow, I, I tomorrow, if BJP starts controlling Maharashtra, it's possible they'll do this something to Mumbai also, it, because they can. It, it, they but can see, it, it's not a BJP thing, right? The Maharashtra beef ban was implemented by the Congress government. It is no, no, a BJP no, 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 party in Maharashtra. They can overnight change this. They can change this. Candidates in Maharashtra. We are talking about the beautiful state of Uttar Pradesh. and he's a very very different man very different man from from the rest of the cadre okay and yeah. and the style has been very despotic from the beginning and that's not changing that's getting worse we still maharashtra whatever you say about us will still be some some sort of functioning democracy where people will fight but here this is just going to happen i mean there doesn't seem to be any opposition to his mandate it's just we already spoken about it last week it's done that's that's scary i'm very worried about that Yeah. yeah it's a bit like my marriage you know my wife just decides what we do that's it do you, you think know? this spreads to the to other parts of up and spreads to maybe the rest of up well which already in our parts uh, we had uh, kasai is being killed and all that hung lynched all that has already happened so it's not like it's not there but they're trying to act democratic by saying mathura is a holy land there's a reason why right. krishna did that you find some kind of correlation no they find yeah. correlations to different places ayodhya holy land And give the reason for it. Uh, so they, uh, they, they'll do that. See again, Mathura is a religious center, right? And so they're using correct. that as a fig leaf. Exactly. So that's what they're saying. Now, our religious yeah. cent- centers cannot have meat and alcohol, but there are plenty of them in UP, for example. Then you can see the religious center next to the religious center that also should be looked at as a brother center. <laughs> you know. Yeah. The question then you have to ask Amit Doshi is why did you return? Why did you? Oh, <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Sometimes I wonder that. no but listen hey listen again opportunity right i mean like india uh, it is a country that's going through a lot of upheaval but at the same time that upheaval leads to a space uh, leads to a place which i'm hopeful uh, i'm hopeful about i'm 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 fundamentally optimistic about people it. have to play a more important role in democracy in india we yep. just got to play a more important role that's why the farmers agitation is important you know you it's not about right and wrong it's just a fact that we have to stay and, and stand and say look this is this law is not working that's what democracy is all about if this law is not working look at it again in parliament not by shooting people so i just i mean we are hopeful in the words of yeah, exactly. ravi shastri i'm positive uh, he's positive for covid <laughs> i'm positive yeah cool so just Hello. as we end i would like to remind our audience to please uh, like this video and uh, please give us re- uh, review us on google podcast apple podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts and uh, Yep. Thank you for tuning in. And, and subscribe to the channel. It's a new channel. Available um, on Amazon at a very good price. You can use our card, uh, and they'll give you a discount. Right? Just have to say uh, "cock and bull," and immediately it will be half the price. So I'm told. Yeah, or, so or I'm you told. just use the internet. 
you don't have to yeah. invest in all the different all the various porn sites that i have been forced to follow have told me this let me just tell you <laughs> this amit doshi had a teacher who discussed porn after which his life went in the wrong direction i mean yeah. what's the name of that uh, erudite man uh, let's not go there i'm not going to name him okay fair enough why why <laughs> What if he's what if he's a cooperator or something today? <laughs> the guy, he somewhere in Mathura was making the policy decisions for Yogi Bhai. Chalo, okay, guys. Thank you. I'll go back to Bond Vita. You think they can sponsor us, Bond Vita? Bond Vita is good. We can try. I love Bond Vita. Thing. All right, let's toss him. Bye bye.